do How many that. copies of a single card does one even need? Let's have a look-see here. What does Act 1 look like? It looks like a slime boss. That uh, pretty much defines Act 1 for silence. Is there a slime boss or is there not? If you're facing slime boss, you have a very difficult fight ahead of you. Slime boss just has a really nasty matchup versus this character, uh, particularly on the high ascensions, and it's going to take a lot of dedicated card picking to make sure that we can win that fight. What are the plans for the transmutation deck? It's pretty much going to have to happen essentially at random. Uh, I really can't plan to get uh, two X cost colorless cards. It's just going to the stars will align at some point. Uh, my hope is that we can find a chemical X and make that work, but that's really the only strong interaction there is. The starting options are kind of tough to choose between as well. I guess a regular card reward is a bit underwhelming, but decent. Um, as far as paths through the act go, there's actually one relatively low elite path we can take. Interesting path here. If we're really afraid of the early elites, there is this line here. Don't know how I feel about this. It's just something I spotted. Uh, tra more traditionally, I would take a path like this one. Let's mark it in red here. This goes for three elites and seems pretty suicidal, although we could have optionality here. We can see what our first few card rewards are. Uh, otherwise, we're going to this shop, right? If we go to that shop, we either face the Burning Elite. There's no way we go far right here. It's terrible. Shop, fire, elite, shop, elite, fire. That's kind of interesting. So let's mark this with a gold star. That's not unreasonable. Something like this. That would get us two elites. Not 100% sure what we do with these... Uh, Two shops. My main issue, though, is paying in health. 15 damage for 250 gold is kind of an icky trade. At least when you're in a slime boss act. What if you could not see the full path of the floors? How would that affect the playstyle? Oof, that would that would be very transformative for uh, for Slay the Spire. Th thinking about the implications of, like, can you even guarantee that you can get the green key on every run now? Interesting. That'd be tough. Yeah, I think less information in, the, in this regard would, would probably make the game a bit less predictable, a bit less skill-based. Hmm. I feel like there either is or used to be a daily mode modifier that obscured the map. So do I take max health or do I just eat the damage to take the money? Money starts are so strong. Alright, I'll eat some damage, but I usually regret it when I do this. Usually. Um, and we should definitely take three combats here. Prior to that first elite. Uh, as we do not get our remaining combats for quite a while. Kind of a lousy turn one. Yuck, yuck, yuck. I gotta come up with new jokes though, man. Pretty good, all things considered. Can be 10 damage or more from, uh, a tough lice fight there. We get a fruit juice from the first combat. That's kind of a bit of a blessing. Five max HP to use whenever we wish. We won't drink it immediately because there is a chance we could find something like a toy ornithopter to get some extra health out of this. And that could be as soon as the shop. As far as card re rewards go here, we got three different attacks. We'll definitely take one of them. I'm pretty happy with a poison stab as it does the most damage out of any of these three. Finisher would be aspirational, hoping to get shivs or something. Um, but my experience is that if you don't have consistency with Finisher, it will betray you. You'll draw alongside four defends, or slimes, or dazed, and it won't do anything, and you will die. So I like to avoid Finisher unless I know it's going to work. 
I don't know what's going to work here. What I do know is that Poison Stab is great damage. Six damage initially, and then three, two, one from the poison. If you have any other sources of poison, you can essentially count that as then three damage per turn. Kind of like a lightning orb almost. Pretty good. Poison is Silent's natural, easy way to deal with high health enemies. As long as you can apply enough poison such that by the time you draw your poison cards, um, there's still some poison on the enemy. You can stack it and get more and more and more damage per turn. Hmm. Not a great second card reward. I guess Cloak and Dagger is takeable. Sneaky Strike is unreliable, but actually not bad. If we're going into an early elite, maybe I should consider Sneaky Strike here. The big benefit to Sneaky Strike, in my opinion, in this position, is that it is a high damage single hit attack, and that's primarily useful because it gives us a better matchup against the Lagavulin Elite. Lagavulin will debuff us with negative two strength, negative two dex after several turns of combat, but Sneaky Strike will still deal 10 damage under that condition, whereas our normal strikes will be only dealing four. After two debuffs, they'll only deal two, but Sneaky Strike still does eight. Let's take a Sneaky Strike. Hey, and we can take a generous heal from the banana here. I can't remember if drinking the fruit juice now will increase the heal from this. Let's find out. This is actually going to be a 22 hit point heal or not. It should be a percentage of our max HP. So is it 22? Yes, it is 22. Had to know. For science. We just killed the Spike Slime here. So all that uh, health that we lost as our starting bonus has returned to us now. We actually have more health than a Silent would at the start of a run, usually. And we have a lot of money. It's a pretty fortuitous start thus far. We even got out of the early combats with little damage taken. We got an attack potion for that first elite. And our choice of backstab or bouncing flask is also pretty spectacular. Bouncing Flask with Poison Stab is a really nice poison start. Whereas the Backstab is no-nonsense, reliable turn one damage, and probably more broadly useful against Slime Boss. That said, I do like a Bouncing Flask. A lot. Just any two energy damage card is a really good investment early on, because it takes your starting deck so much further. Let's go and Shmammerin. Hey there, hi there. Let's go Bouncing Flask here. If we see another backstab, we'll take it, but it's a flask for me. <laughs> Curse of the Dagger Spray is back. Strike Dummy is here. Gremlin Horn is here. After Image is here. Interesting. Well, I'm not about to buy a Dagger Spray and curse this run. If I take that elite, we are going to another shop. Very hard for me to turn down a Grumlin Horn. This is one of my favorite uncommon relics to see. Makes some of the most troublesome fights in the game so much easier. It'll help against Slime Boss. It'll help against the three sentries. Uh, it'll help against Gremlins or Slimes if we encounter them later in this act. Later in the run, it helps us against Slavers, Gremlin Leader, Collector, Raptomancer. Especially Raptomancer, it's nice to have Gremlin Horn for. Nerd Birds. I'm gonna buy it. That leaves us with $101. How do I feel like our elite matchup is gonna be here? It's pretty good if I upgrade Bouncing Flask. Sequel says, I'm surprised upgrading Bouncing Flask beats Knob. For two energy, it deals. Uh, if you draw it on turn, uh, if you draw it on turn one, it'll deal 12 plus 11 plus 10 is 33 damage. Yeah, 33 damage. Uh, if you draw it turn one, 23 damage if you draw it turn two. So it's quite a lot of damage as long as you don't put it on the bottom of your deck with a draw order.
Ravaru, thanks for 16 months of support. Which spire boss can tell the future? Hexagostradamus. Love it. It does as much damage in three turns as eruption strike strike. Abigail is thanks for converting that prime sub to a tier one, making it official. Prepared is not terrible because of the sneaky strike that we have. Should maybe think about it. Um, but since I know I'm going to another shop, I'm really tempted to not spend any money here. Uh, although we might want to buy a potion. I think we'll be okay. I think we'll be okay. Yeah, like, it, pay 55 gold for that, it really doesn't feel worth it, right? And I'm not desperate enough to buy this slice, either. Is remove a bad idea? No, but I think we'd rather remove after the Elite, rather than before. We won't have enough money to remove here and here. So, let's delay it for one fight. The remove won't help that much against the Act 1 Elites, anyway. Especially against Gremlinov, we don't want to remove a strike. Maybe removing a defend is okay. Removing a card would give us a better chance of turn one Bouncing Flask in this fight. Ooh. We rolled sentries where the Gremlin Horn's going to help out. Um, I do think we're going to have two relics for this next elite fight and we get a shop. I think we should probably just spend the attack potion in this fight. Uh, and I'd rather do it now. We could get uh, some really good value out of Dagger Throw. And there's quite a few others that would be good. There's Dagger Throw. Excellent. Ask and ye shall receive. Flechette's only hits one time. No thanks. Is that enough damage to kill the middle one? Let's just do some quick math. We have 21. And then 21. So we can definitely do 42. Actually, yes, I can exactly kill the middle one here. It'll die to poison, which means I won't get the value out of the Gremlin Horn. So let's kill the front one here. Do I care about Bouncing Flask? I don't think so. I'll block that. We can take the fight comparatively slow at this point. No idea who I'm targeting. Let's go for you. We both have the same health. It's 50-50 on which one's correct. Heck it. Do I want to apply weak or three poison? Probably three poison. Ultimately, we need to do damage to win the fight. Strike this one twice to get an immediate Grumlin Horn proc, but then I'm gonna play one defend either way, so let's just defend one time. Strike the front one instead. Hopefully, that's the last damage we're taking here. Nice. Okay, I think that went pretty well. Overall, quite happy with the outcome. We took 10 or 15 damage. And uh, we get an anchor, a boat thingy, for 10 block turn one. Love that on silent. And we're offered a doppelganger, an escape plan, and an endless agony. How fascinating. Endless agony is the most reasonable pick here, but I'm really intrigued by doppelganger. Doppel is one of my favorite cards. Kind of an unusual pick on silent, but uh, really interesting. I like to call it a bad card with a really good upgrade. Doppelganger plus gives you one more card and one more energy on the next turn than the energy you spend into it. But overall, Doppelganger is really about turning um, an otherwise useless turn into setting up a future turn. 
Night Owl, thanks for three months in the Prime sub. Finally got your first A20 heart kill with Corruption, Dark Embrace, Dead Branch. Well, that'll do it. Well done. Well done. No shame in getting your first heart kill that way. It was my way. That was how I did it, too, was uh, Dead Branch, Corruption on the Ironclad. I didn't even know what I was going into. I just I fought the heart, and we barely won off the Dead Branch Corruption, even though I, I had never been in the combat before. And zero. I'm trying to come up with a dad joke based on your username, but I think there's zero chance that I'm going to be able to do that successfully. And zero laughs in response to this joke. So I beat my first heart combat ever, yes. On, on Ascension 20, no less. But it was like a, a hundred plus max health ironclad with uh, Dead Branch Corruption. And zero refunds. Dead Bird Odor, thanks so much for Prime sub and seven months of support. The Sea Right, thanks for the Prime sub. Never fought the heart while climbing ascensions. No, because the heart was added long after I had climbed all the ascensions. The content in uh, Slay the Spire had an early access period, so the content wasn't all in at the same time. So we were doing rotating Ascension 20 runs for a couple of months before the heart was added. So everybody tried to do uh, heart kind of blindly on A20, at least those who were streaming on Twitch. And infamously, that's actually why the heart has the invincible buff to this day, is because uh, Jorbs on his channel slew the heart on turn one before it ever got to do anything, using a dead branch corruption ironclad. And they realized, hey, this is, this enemy needs to have a, a counter to that. And now the heart does. Now the heart will absolutely slap your face because that stupid damage cap. C Wright says, just be hard for the first time with a random A8 defect deck that randomly started popping off at the end. Glad I could help you find the ways to pop off as the defect. So it's such a fun, fun thing to do with this character, or with that character. Oh man, there are options in this store. I really like our options in this shop, actually. Two fairy in a bottle, gleaming at me, and a lizard tail, and a potion belt. This this merchant really wants to sell you an extra life. Acrobatics is nice card draw. Leg sweep is premium block. And endless agony is pretty good discount damage. Card removal is appealing, certainly. There's only one unmastered card we can afford here, and I think it's actually kind of good. Silent normally struggles with sustain, but Bandage Up as a zero-cost heal card can be a surprisingly good source of sustenance for the Silent. I really like it alongside our high-cost cards as well. And I like that that's going to buy us some health for the Slime Boss. It's going to make it easier to survive in Act 2. Let's try it. I'm going to take a Bandage Up here. And if we're lucky, we might even find another one by the end of the run for our Mastery Challenge. What's in the box? The toy ornithopter. So we're actually punished for drinking that fruit juice at the event for the science. Could have had five more hit points. But I'm still happy with five hit points with from every potion here on out. This is why you wait to drink the fruit juice, Twitch chat. This is why you wait. Hmm, I don't really love this draw pile, but I'm not gonna not play Bouncing Flask here. Probably use the skill potion on one of these two turns. I don't really feel like this fight is going to go all that well if I don't employ... Yeah, exactly. Come on, leg sweep. One time. Cloak and Dagger will have to do... I could also go Deadly Poison for more poison. Just tank 20 to the face. We've got healing after all. It's fine. No, surely we're okay. Going to employ the doppelganger here to its full effect. Draw me more cards. Well, 
Unlock the whole thing. We should redraw into Bouncing Flask, hopefully, for the buff turn. Yeah, that worked out well. Good fight. Now, Poison really adds up to a lot of damage versus single targets. Might not seem like it initially, but Bouncing Flask really is a single target card. The fact that it randomly targets enemies is a downside. You really want all the poison going onto one enemy. Mall Bank. Cool. Nice to find after we've spent all our money. Other than the relic we've bought, it's only common relic so far, and that's kind of cool. So, 12 gold per floor, courtesy of Mall Bank. Accuracy, Piercing Whale, Dodge and Roll. I could get behind a Piercing Whale. It's a nice Act 2 card. And pretty good against the slime boss, too. Next question is a shop has to be. Well, guess what? No question marks allowed. I think the doppelganger upgrade is quite good, but I'm actually going to upgrade bandage up first so that we can heal six by playing it. That's going to allow me to heal six, heal six, heal six, plus any potions we find as we get towards Slime Boss. I really do want to have more health for that fight. Get him, Sneaky Strike. Yeah. Actually, hit this one. This one, the middle one's going to attack me next turn, guaranteed. Um, I'm just going to Doppelganger. We've got uh, Kriblin Horn to help out here as well. Perfect. Can't full block with double defend, so we need to kill something. Perfectly balanced, as all things should be. But the problem is I don't think I can get a kill still, right? We'd have to do 10 damage to either of them. This only does 4 plus 3. And then they'll curl up. So, uh, unfortunately, with that distribution, we take damage. Health's still trending upwards, though. We're an ironclad now. Fire Potion is very good for Slime Boss. Terror is kind of interesting. We don't actually have that much attack damage. Bane is a good attack alongside these poison cards. Blade Dance is okay. But Terror is so broadly useful, I think we should just grab Terror right now. And then we can take any further attack cards we see and they'll be good. Big agree that Bane, especially with an upgrade, slaps quite hard and is not to be slept on. Okay, Terror is already looking pretty good here, actually. Take one, but we healed six. That's a good fight. These we don't need. I, I could take an all out attack if we're sufficiently worried about Slime Boss. Theoretically, all out attack and Sneaky Strike have synergy. It is actually decent AoE. All right, you know what? I'll take it. I'll take it. And yeah, the Gremlin Horn, Gremlin Horn all that attack is quite kind of nice. I'm really liking that going into Act Two here. In fact, this is starting to look like the sort of silent that could take a Black Star and get away with it. Feeling really good about this slime boss fight with over over 60 health, accounting for the heal during the slime boss fight, and two potions. And I certainly don't need any of these. We could maybe think about outmaneuver, but already we've gotten probably too many cards into this deck. So let's skip. The boat thingy has definitely been carrying our uh, hit point total in Act 1, giving us a lot of free turns to use. Is it time to upgrade Doppelganger? I like that more than the Terror upgrade. All the attack upgrades also very nice. 
but I'm I'm a believer in doppelganger, especially with the boat thingy making turn one less important. So let's get an extra t energy and an extra draw per fight. We'll see how it goes. We'll use a potion during the slime boss fight, either speed to help us tank the slime crush, or fire pot. Let's see here. This fight's usually about doing enough damage before turn three to avoid this sort of nonsense, but uh, here we are. This could be pretty bad, actually. If I play all an attack and it discards defend, we're in good... Or, or strike, we're in really good shape here. I believe in you all at attack, what do you got? Nice, good work. Alright, fire potion it is. Get wrecked, slime boss. Easy. Easy peasy. Alright, we're gonna Survivor and then Doppelganger for three to get one big turn. I don't want to do a little bit of damage to these. I want to do enough damage to split them outright, if possible. So let's just have one big turn. We 24, so we can prevent this attack. And play both of these lines. That's a pretty good turn. Not the best, but pretty good. Getting weakened is kind of bad for the all attack, but we can hopefully use the Gremlin Horn to make up the rest of the rest of the difference here. Well, you're dead. Easy. We've also got lots of health, so if we have to tank a couple hits at the very end, it's not too bad. Dear Saron, thanks for 23 months. Heck yeah. The double triple app. Let's play Bouncing Flask first, as long as it's not four bounces on the same one, they'll both die. I think it was less likely that the four bounces hit the same slime than it was that uh, all that attack discarded bouncing flask, but I'm not sure. Either way, we get one of our potions back, so we have two potions going into Act 2, and we're offered some nice stuff here. And Venom would make our attacks apply poison. Problem is, we don't actually hit enemies that many times, so Venom is less poison than, say, a deadly poison would be. Storm of Steel lets us discard our hand, getting shivs for each card it discarded. That also seems not that helpful here. Or we can take an Adrenaline, which is absolutely helpful. Card draw and a bit of energy. Each fight, it's good. So when, when considering whether to take two unmastered rares that hurt the deck, or one already mastered rare that's quite good, I'm going to take the card that's good. It's the adrenaline here. Hmm, interesting. Very interesting set of relic options. I like these. If we want energy, we can take the fusion hammer. We can no longer upgrade our cards, but we have more energy per turn. Lack of upgrades would definitely hurt the deck long term. Don't love that. Ring of the Serpent replaces our starting relic, so we lose the two draw on turn one, replace it with one draw every turn. That could be quite useful. I like Ring of the Serpent in decks with low cost cards. Or we can take three relics immediately and a curse via the Culling Bell. I definitely like the Culling Bell here. Some insight on the cute nature of your puppy. Sounds adorable, Ghost Banyat. What a horrible night to have a curse. 
I do like me a calling bell here. I think I think Ring of the Serpent is also acceptable. It's it's nice with cards like Bandage Up. Uh, if we upgrade Terror, it'll be good. It makes it easier to draw Adrenaline. But I'm also really curious what more relics could provide. Let's go with the Calling Bell. Akabeko Kunai and Stone Calendar. Actually, not the most inspiring set of relics. Kunai is really nice on Silent, generally speaking, who loves access to dexterity, but we need to play three attacks in one turn, which the deck currently does not easily do. Hmm. This is the most convenient shop to go to, but I don't have to. Mike's borking and loves belly rubs. It's my kind of puppy. Time to go for four elites now that the bad relics are out of the way. What, Akabaku and Kunai? The bad relics. My question is, is it worth losing an elite and an upgrade? To get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. To get 108 gold. Probably not. Okay, let's just go to the early shop then. Means we can even go to this event. We won't get that much mob bank value, but still, over 100 is really nice. Really, really nice. Bonk. Poison helps a lot in this fight. Oh, nice. So we can go Neutralize, Piercing Whale, both strip artifact, then Bouncing Flask applies enough poison such that this enemy will die next turn. And then we can defend take five. Perfect. Need all the poison to get the turn, uh, turn three kill. Spirit Guardian is very much a damage check. Can you kill it by turn three to avoid this nasty 11 by two? Swift Potion would heal me for 5 immediately and has a 75% chance to get the bandage up to go to full health here. I think that's worth it. Especially because there's a 40% chance we get a new potion. In this case, a fairy in a bottle. Anyone for an Acrobatics Plus? Anyone at all? Seems like a good card draw card. On three energy, it's a little bit less good. I, I mean, it helps the sneaky strike already, which is going to be a nice kunai interaction. But I mean, just the sheer amount of card draw is so, so useful here. Didn't know poison went through block. It does. It most certainly does. We want to strike this back one here. This is definitely a fight where the uh, Gremlin Horde is going to help out a little bit. Piercing Whale might also help a little bit. This is a horrifying turn, though. What's with the double 14s? Ouch. Why's it got to be like that, though? Defend, auto attack, neutralize, or do I dare Bouncing Flask? Hmm. It's okay to take some damage. I mean, we have healing, right? This might be the smarter line, but let's do this. They angry though. You need to die. You in the back. If I have to wait for Stone Calendar in, the calendar in this fight, so be it. You can be patient. Alright, well, this is definitely a, a good use case for acrobatics here. What do you got, Acro? 
Well done. Right, you can go to the ground then. Anything that gets you off of my case here. One more turn till Stone Calendar. What's gonna happen, Twitch chat? The power of the calendar. Upgraded Sucker Punch. Nice supplement to the weakness. I think Deflect is also good in a deck with relatively little energy and lots of decks from the Kunai. So I think I'll be taking this Deflect because of the sheer amount of card draw we have now. And I'll take an event here. Remove a card or upgrade all of our strikes and defends. We have 10 unupgraded starter cards. Upgrade them. Really like upgraded defends with a kunai in particular. That's going to make us a lot more impactful through Act 1 here. Really improves the average card quality. Which is not the most important thing, but it definitely helps here. Nothing in this shop really is exciting. well -aid plans is good enough. Card remove is good enough. Nothing zero cost or multi-hit though. Sound effects only for I am awake. I don't I don't think the ancient writing makes a sound effect usually. Clockwork is nice with the speed potion, works really well against a few of the enemies in Act 2. Our Act boss is Champ, it won't help much there, but it helps a little bit. Champ we should already be able to beat with Kunai, but well laid plans will make it easier. Ever correct to save money for Ma Bank here? And just go into Act 2. Just skip at, just skip this shop entirely, maybe, or we could route into a late Act 2 shop. That could be a possibility. We'd have to be pretty confident in beating the whole of Act 2 without taking too much... Uh, without losing, and I think that's pretty doable with what we have so far. We should be fine against Elites. I'm a little worried about Act 3 with no card removes. And Souvenir will genuinely be really good for the late game, so it's nice to have. No, I think I'd rather... I'd rather get ahead on the removes and such. Do I remove a strike? Yes. Even though we upgraded them. Piercing Whale? Piercing Whale and well aid plans immediately justifying its existence in this deck. If you had any doubts at all whether that was the right pick, let this moment show you that it certainly was. Please and thank you. Only missing 5 health. I guess I should hold this then for a moment. Since we could take damage here. Could certainly take damage here. It looks like we won't be. exciting to have this outcome against Snake Plant. Often regarded as one of the nasty encounters of Act 2, we just make short work of it here. Easy. Second Acrobatics. Not really affordable here. None of these cards are upgraded. I don't think we take them. 
Choke certainly not doing much here. We can't play very many cards per turn. No thanks. So do we go for four elites? And actually parse this path. Spooky man, I like it though. We're strong. Let's see how we do in the first elite fight. It's Gremlin Leader. Soon to be Gremlin Bleeder. And I'd say this is a pretty good turn one draw overall. You, perish. Love it. Fortunately, all the poison going onto the sneaky gremlin is not ideal there, but we do full block this. Keep the sticky strike because we have discard stuff coming. Should have upgraded the all-out attack. Tisk tisk. Uh, we don't need the bandage up right now. Go terror all attack. Nice. Um. You'll be alone next turn. Let's hold Bouncing Blast then. If we get attacked, so that'll be a bit bad, but at least we have bonus card draw and energy to work with here. Good. Really good fight. Okay. Perfect did the first elite. That's a pretty good sign. And Gremlin Horn was definitely part of that. We get a Thread and Needle for Plated Armor for block per turn. Offered a Burst to duplicate skills. Burst Bandage Up. Burst Adrenaline. Burst Doppelganger. Burst Bouncing Flask. Lots of really cool burst targets in this deck. Give that to me and upgrade it immediately. All right, let's do another relief fight. I feel good. Burst Terror. Burst Blurst. There's no limit. Hmm. Not loving this turn one very much. Currently, our artifact will block Weaken. I think that's actually a good thing, blocking the Weaken. We definitely want to put damage on the back Slaver here. I might need to retain Sneaky Strike. With like something like Neutralize, Strike, Strike. well aid plans. We could Speed Potion instead. Don't know that I love that option. The idea would be to try to hold out for Stone Calendar. Hmm. Now, whatever we do, we still have to do drop the Red Slaver as quickly as possible. I'm not going to use Burst on Defend here. I'd much rather Burst either Piercing Whale or Flask or Adrenaline. Yeah, that makes me think we should keep the Sneaky Strike. Alright, I'll keep Sneaky Strike. We need we need damage for this guy. <laughs> There's the Sneaky Strike all at attack combo. I don't think I'm going to trust the interaction, though. I'm just going to go Sneaky Strike first, then all at attack. We need to guarantee we don't get vulnerable here. Fine. And we're going to eat some damage now. 
a bit unfortunate. But we have lots of healing in this run. Sixty percent chance for potion too. Worth thinking about. Flask? No, we can just keep our block cards. Keep a survivor here. And that's why. Cost us one health this turn, but might save us six health next turn. Walk this way. And this guy we can kill with Stone Calendar. Let's just burst defend here. You show him, Stone Calendar. Alright, that wasn't too bad. We didn't even get a potion. I'll definitely use one of these, uh, the speed pot in the next fight here. Get an ink bottle and catalyst with burst and poison. Or an upgraded prepared. Probably catalyst though. Burst catalyst is very strong and will just instantly kill the champ. So yeah, click the catalyst. Catalyst doubles an enemy's poison, so it's extra strong when you multiply it because you're multiplying your multiplication quadratic scaling and artivore is here to be also incredible if we don't play any attacks on our turn gain extra energy on the next turn so either we play three for the kunai or we play none for the bonus energy we'll be upgrading catalyst and well aid plans as our next upgrades all right, Speed Pot, Book of Stabbing. I actually feel pretty comfortable with that. Just gonna go Terror Double. Plus Art of War. Now that's what I'm talking about. turn. Easy peasy. First catalyst goes to 28, then to more than 28. 56. Uh, so we want to go adrenaline. Burst, bandage up, catalyst, defend. Look at all that healing. Get a bag of preparation, two more cards turn one. Definitely welcome, and another doppelganger. Yeah! Give me a double doppel. Now give me a Chemex. I want it. Just bandage up twice. I love it. Get an extra card remove. See you later, strike. And our last opponent, the Slavers rematch. Let's go. You nerds won't. Ooh, we did get all out attack with Ekabeko. So let's all out attack first, question mark, see what gets discarded. 
sure. Strike got discarded. Good. Let's see. We have 18 block. Incoming damage is 30. So I think we defend and then doppelganger. This is not really a fight where well-aid plans matters that much. Draw seven for next turn. It's a little worrisome. I guess I'm allowed to see where the Bouncing Flask bounces go first before I decide who to try to kill here. Good. Three skills. Catalyst is not really worth playing. Again, we can kill the middle guy with stone calendar if we, calendar if we really want to. Though no well-aid plans could make this a little tricky. Another beautiful fight against these three. Love it. Blue Candle! That's actually not too bad, because now it means we can play the Curse of the Bell. We'll take one damage, but because we have plentiful healing, um, that's nice for fights where we're drawing through the deck multiple times. It also counts towards the Ink Bottle, so it can draw us a card sometimes. Backflip seems basic, but really effective in a deck like this. We want card draw. Fiona Gray, thanks for 34 months. Why is this deck doing so well? Because many of the cards are upgraded, because we have a lot of relics that are adding to our combat value. The boat thingy, the Akabeko, the thread needle, a lot of extra card draw. Uh, and the Art of War especially is helping with energy. 90% potion odds, apparently. Thankfully, I haven't needed potions. All right, well, he plans first, Kendall is second, I think. Triple Bird Nerds, let's go. Ka. Ka. That's what I said. Um, I guess we can just stop here, huh? So here, for example, if we really wanted to, we could play a Sender's Bane, take one damage and draw a card. I want a Frozen Eye now. Double defend, double doppelganger. Draw six additional cards, gain six additional energy next turn. Don't mind if I do. Glorious.
An upgraded acro is kind of whatever. Eviscerate is. Eh. <laughs> Watch your language. Like that. I uh, would appreciate it if we do keep the uh, the chat room in English only, please. Um, primarily for purposes of uh, moderation. Myself and the moderators can't understand a non-English language, then we cannot filter it to make sure it's appropriate for the chat room. I don't really have enough energy for me to feel super comfortable with acrobatics, but I guess another one's not too bad. I don't have an upgrade for it, though. Thanks, Switch Chat. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, insert the dev do dead dove in a bag meme here. <laughs> Thanks. Burn Stromberg, thanks for the two months of the Prime sub. Heck yeah. So if we just burst Bouncing Flask Catalyst, how much poison is that? That would be 24 times 9, which is big number. Big number. Let's try something else, though. rolling over some of that extra energy with this doppelganger. Draw four more. Let's just bandage up now. Super big turn. Simply doing one bursted catalyst is not enough. Flask. We'll take some damage here. That should set us up pretty well. Yeah, we'll just go Bouncing Flask Catalyst and he's dead. GG, Monsieur. Get in there, Stone Calendar. GG. Translation, where is the library? Thanks for the two years, by the way, Boba. Let's see, did I miss any support earlier here? Third place is not first place, but still very good place. Here you go, Tort. All right, now Invenom looks a little better. That said, what about Nightmare? Nightmare definitely does things not just with Catalyst, but actually also with Bandage Up. Nightmare Bandage Up could heal us to full health from almost any position. 
which is pretty cool. Means we'll want to upgrade the Nightmare, slash get more energy by any means necessary. Uh, but it's doable, and the, the burst makes it all the more silly, I think. Let's take it. We can do quite a few silly things with that. Go uh, Cunning Pot over Flex Pot. With well-aid plans plus, we should be getting a pyramid, says the Bafla. Here it is. But does this deck actually want a Riddick Pyramid? When we have Coffee Dripper. Coffee Dripper with Burst Nightmare Bandage Up for healing. Seems like a pretty free source of energy. We said we wanted more energy. This helps a lot. Um, very importantly, actually, Coffee Dripper, four energy per turn means we can do Burst, Bouncing Flask, Catalyst. Even if we played an attack on the previous turn. So... I like the Dripper here. Had we taken an Energy Relic from the Act 1 boss, Pyramid would be a lot more reasonable here. Um, more energy also makes these two X-cost doppelgangers all the better. Let's take a Dripper. Jay saying, thanks for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Let's take out the Burning Elite this act, which can be rather restrictive on the pathing. Sometimes leaving Burning Elite for Act 3 means you can't go to a shop, for example. Although, thankfully, that doesn't seem to be the case here. Looks like we'll get two Elites, no, three Elites, and only one upgrade this act. So we have one upgrade. I'm thinking Adrenaline might be better than Nightmare, but we'll see. Randomosity with... Four metric years. Well, heck yeah. Guess we just do this. Nothing to burst here. Okay, now we have something to burst. Burst adrenaline. Then I could burst Doppelganger if I wanted to. What if I will aid plans burst Doppelganger? I like it. Keep this, keep this. Good talk. Not mastered. Don't completely dislike a writhe. We don't have that many chances to get a second one. But it's really not bad with the uh, blue candle. Hmm. All right, it's very low odds that this turns into a card mastery, but we're going to take Rive here. Takes up one of our uh, turn one card slots, but not the biggest impact, thankfully. Hmm, this fight's a bit tricky. Nightmare for the moment. Planning on using poison much in this fight. So what is this? Burst. Nightmare. Targeting adrenaline, adrenaline. Burst adrenaline. 
Play Piercing Whale. Here we go. Just do that, forehead. Six adrenalines, please. The Silliness of Nightmare. Burst them. Burst them all. Keep bursting them. Forever. And burst this. And this. This deck is dumb. And I love it. Escape plan is okay. We have a lot of skills in this deck. Sure, escape plan, you're welcome. We'd love to get a little bit more dexterity. Kunai is really not that good yet. But if we can get any decent quantity, Kunai is going to pop off. There's some dexterity. Footwork. Deflect is another good block card. Could pick up a Dramatic Entrance or Master of Strategy here. Don't really like those. Blur is nice. We can afford Card Remove Ghost in a Jar if we want to. That's pretty tempting. Really like that Ghost in a Jar. Probably more than I like the footwork, actually. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, lose the fairy, actually. And then lose another strike. Now lose poison stab? Sure. Down two attacks and two floors? That feels really good. Now the deck's even better. And it's time for Reptomancer. We bought the Gremlin Horn very early in the run, in part specifically because of this fight. Bouncing Flask discarded is a little sad. Oh, it's definitely sad. Uh, do I shiv here and now? I'm thinking about it. Actually, let's not yet. Really not that many attacks in the deck, though, as you can see, which makes it quite difficult to kill these daggers in time. I think we'll be blocking this one. In fact, this would be a good turn to block entirely. We'll think on that. Piercing whale. I think we should just use it. If we don't kill any of the daggers, then Reptomancer will actually only summon one knife on her turn. Because Repto's turn comes before this dagger does. Repto can't have more than four daggers at once, so she'll only summon one knife. It's actually kind of useful. I probably want Piercing Well next turn, actually. Do I dare keep Nightmare? Uh, no, I need to keep Sneaky Strike and Piercing Well. And yeah, if we killed a, a different dagger, then she would summon two. So 
It's funny how that works. regretting some of these attacker moves now. Kind of funny. First will apply. Double this. Okay, that looks a bit better. A little bit, though. Screw that dagger in particular. I guess. Okay. That leaves us, leaves us with no poison on Repto, but uh, otherwise this is fine. All right, I can burst the catalyst to my heart's content. Good, good job. All right, I can double this now. Finally, poison. is most certainly good enough. Whew. Thought we're gonna have to wait for Stone Calendar there. I guess we still can. Stone Calendar, get in there. Bonk. Ninja Scroll? But what if I already have a full opening hand? I think a piercing well, though. Ninja Scroll, you're unfortunately going to get left on the ground, even though we do have a kunai. It is a point of dexterity. Uh, those valuable turn one draws, I'm not willing to give up. So no. Unfortunately. Not today. What's the order on the cards that we would get in the opening hand? It would be start with three shivs from Ninja Scroll and two cards from Bag of Prep. And then draw five? Something like that? Usually your relic supply before your base hand for the turn kicks in. Ten additional cards next turn. My hand is full. Do 
we need another poison source, we would really appreciate one. Even if just a po uh, potion would be helpful. Blade Dance is pretty tempting, though. To give us the dexterity we need and more attacks. I'll take that. Got to take Sapphire Key over the Prayer Wheel. Not that there's that many combat rewards left in the Spire anyhow. Did we toss the fairy in a bottle? We did, unfortunately. Poor fairy didn't deserve it. Now. We could get hit for 45 next turn. I need all the help I can get. Or if we don't get hit, then I just need to draw a bunch of cards. That'll do it. So, with 10 poison to start, we go to 30, 90, 270, 810, 24, 30, 7,290 damage. Blah. Booth work. Booth work. I know Fumes was another poison source, but footwork. This is the power of exponential growth. Wait, this could have a writhe. Or another nightmare. Shame, I don't want to shame. Double nightmare. Not nah, shame and normality. But I'll take another nightmare, sure. Now we have nightmare nightmare shenanigans, which, well... Does stuff, certainly. Certainly does stuff. Order. Exclamation point order. Don't even bother playing this. Good talk. Good enough. It'll constrict us again this turn. Too smart for that. Gambler's Brew's not bad. I'll take one more backflip now that we have even more dexterity. Backflip is fine. Let's take a Gambler's Brew. Gambler's Brew could really help us set up the poison combo we're going to need to kill the heart. I'm actually a little bit worried about Shield and Spear now that I think about it. We don't have any easy way to deal with those two. Because of our limited poison starting sources. Hmm. That seems like it could be a little bit of trouble, actually. Kind of a sad turn. First bouncing flask.
first nightmare on footwork just for fun. Seven feet. Octopus build, go. And then a casual 70, 1,700 poison, also. This deck's great. Okay, now we can take fumes. I don't even think we need to upgrade it. We just want uh, artifact removal and a little bit of extra poison. Speed potion's pretty good with the souvenir. Might take that for spear and shield. Over gambler's brew. Doppel for plus two. That's not bad. Ooh, still no attack, though. There we go. Oh, we discarded plans so we can play fumes. Probably don't care about that. Play doppelganger. Watch the wounds, though. Oh, boy. Stuff is happening. Play dance is back. I think we're ready for play dance yet. This one we can just block. Now I can play fumes, now I can play fumes. Keep deflect and bouncing flask. Burst piercing whale bouncing flask? Let's do it. Get everybody here. Okay, that's enough poison on Reptomancer. We can actually win eventually. Hopefully, she summons again on this turn. No luck. Dang. Would have been really convenient if you'd chosen to do that, Repto. But I get it. Can't be on my side all the time. Just Nightmare the Catalyst and win next turn.
And I'm only going to play two of them out of respect for Stone Calendar. Beautiful. One more energy on turn one. Definitely welcome with all these cards. We want one more poison card. Deadly poison is pretty adequate here. I'm going to take it. We're going to take it. And we are going to probably upgrade Adrenaline. Yeah, let's do that. A little bit more energy. This deck is very energy hungry with so much card draw. I'm going to hold this Adrenaline for the moment. Adrenaline Piercing Whale. The artifact layers on these enemies make poison relatively difficult to use against them. But that won't be stopping me. Hmm, what's the play here? We could Nightmare Piercing Whale. We could Nightmare Noxious Fumes. Kind of dig Nightmare Piercing Whale here. Hold on, if I'm going to do that, let's just draw one more card. Cool. Excellent. Catalyst, one more piercing well. Good times. Sleepy Luna, thanks for 14 months of support. you nerd. Easy peasy. Awaken one's a little bit more of a problem in that we can't just stack a lot of poison on awaken one and instantly kill them. We have to actually think for a minute. first. I'm looking for Nightmare or something here to use on the footwork. There we go. Yeah, let's Nightmare footwork. Good talk. Of course, the Awakened One does get stronger with each footwork we play, but super worth, I assure you. That said, we do need to kill these birds in a reasonable time frame. not going to nightmare them a second time. Hmm. Take a slight amount of damage to gain one more energy next turn. Could lose one plated armor, but I think it'll be worth it. Uh-oh. Well, that's not good. Ouch. Just you wait till next turn, though. Please, anywhere but the face. So 
is too random to be worth ever thinking here. Chain the doubles together. Good. Problem. Full blocking. Let's play this. This and this. remaining powers until after the first phase perishes. Yeah, Corpse Explosion would definitely help in both this fight and the uh, Shield and Spear fight. But we could really use some help. Tis not to be, though. Perfect stone calendar lethal. Oh, we maybe wanted to use piercing well there. I don't think we're going to need it, though, thankfully. My blocks are 25 block each. I think we're fine. I think we'll be okay. block. Easy. Maybe do something like Nightmare the Bouncing Flask, but we'll, we'll win pretty steadily at this pace. Let's Nightmare Deadly, I guess. Just speed this up slightly. Since it was in my hand at that literal moment, why not? the bird nerd. We're on to Act 4 with a very strong deck and some really good potions. I really like our odds here. Quite a lot. GG.
Two thump, two thump, two thump, a deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of all of this dexterity? You prepare your feet. Stepping 24, 60 times as you ascend the spire. Burn your calories for the day. My highest score versus the world record. Well, the highest score that I know of is a seated run done by Forgotten Arbiter. Or wait, was it high score? There you go. That's the highest uh, score run I know of anybody doing in Slay the Spire. Acquiring it by using two nightmares and a wish via Prismatic Shard to get uh, unlimited money and then buy essentially all of the cards in the game. Our highest score is apparently 39.22. It's pretty good. Missing a full 10 health. It's not the world's worst rest. But I think we're going to get that health back anyway, so we might as well upgrade this. Do you have courier? Yes. Aw, oh, man. <laughs> Chemical X. No second bandage up for us, unfortunately. We can either take a blade dance, a second escape plan, or we can simply remove one more strike, which is, I think, what I'm going to do. That's actually what I'd like to know, Baishtar. What, what's the lowest score winning A20 run, or A20 heart run? No mastery. <laughs> oh my goodness, what a draw. Shame I don't have uh, well-laid plans. Guess we'll play this now, then. Oh, Bouncing Flask knows what's up. Alright, just Catalyst, then. Get him. Totally normal collection of cards. Nothing unusual going on here. Oh man, a doppelganger too. That's cute. Oh yeah, in case you thought we're done, we were done. I'm gonna nightmare more adrenalines, by the way. For next turn. it on you. We should actually use the unupgraded doppelganger, apparently, because we're going to overkill. Keep this, this. Play all the cards, really. Normal amounts of cards are illegal. It's lots or nothing. Alright, good turn. 
Yeah, these two. Well, this went far better than expected. To the point we didn't even need to use the speed potion. Definitely makes life a lot easier. And you're dead next turn, too. GG, nerds. Last card award. The second Storm of Steel is here. We should have taken it. Although, I mean, we would have had to take it over Adrenaline, right? And this deck would be completely different without Adrenaline. So, no. We don't need none of this. Skip it all. Let's fight the heart. I got a good feeling about this. Turn one Adrenaline is here. I think we'll just speed potion immediately. Forget the... Hmm. Burst Deadly Poison Catalyst is, I think, 90 poison, right? We go to 10, 30, 90. Yes, 90 poison. That's a pretty good start. Doesn't look like there's any way to do better than that. Good enough. Then I can either Blade Dance or Doppel. I think we should just Doppel. Leave that unplayed. No, I'll just get rid of it. Hopefully block this with a piercing whale. Cannot. Okay. Guess I'll be nightmaring deflect. Rest in pieces, plated armor. And this is certainly the turn that we have the ghost in a jar for. The fairy in a bottle would have also worked to protect us here, but I'm much happier with the ghosts. Good times. Well, now Piercing Whale shows up. Thanks, Piercing Whale. And all we have to do is endure. Heart's taking 100 damage per turn. Continue to Nightmare Deflect, I suppose. Mr. Hart. That should be the perfect amount of health. GG. The Stone Calendar Poison Combo. Kerblam. 
a win. GG.